Good uh, morning, everybody. Um, when, when I was asked to come uh, to speak at today's event, um, it's, it's great to be back at Cardiff. And I, I, I took a bit of time to reflect, I guess, on what is now 29 years in the prison service. I actually started my career in the prison service here at Cardiff Prison, just down the road. And I, I sat back and I sort of reflected on what was prison like 28, uh, 29 years ago for me. What, what did I experience when I for, first walked into Cardiff Prison? And I think, um, on reflection, it wasn't the most humane place to work. It wasn't the, the most humane place for the men to be. And um, pretty soon after I, I started in the prison service, we had a number of disturbances in 1990, uh, which culminated in, in the Wolf Report that uh, some people might be aware of. Now, the Wolf Report highlighted a number of things that he thought was wrong with the prison service at that time. Um, he talked about um, the indecent conditions for the men and those people in custody, men, women and children who were in custody that they had to um, put up with. He talked about a lack of respect and um, a lack of uh, tre poor treatment for the men and those in custody. He talked about, I guess, a, a lack of independence in terms of uh, redress of grievances that were put forward. Um, the poor regime that people had to, um, that people had, there was little in the way of opportunities for people to uh, re-educate themselves, to, to learn new skills, to, uh, to um, sort of build new habits in people and, and create resilience in people to, to, you know, for discharge back into the community. And I think one of the, the other important aspects was about the lack of uh, understanding that how painful prison can be and that loss of liberty can be in terms of um, taking somebody away from their family uh, and, and what, what pains that causes people. So I, I think on reflection, um, you know, the Wolf Report um, highlighted a number of problems that were um, wrong with the prison service back then. I think as, as June uh, talked about earlier on is about the negative press and I, I think prisons are, uh, are no uh, strangers to negative press uh, and they are very very difficult environments uh, for people to work in for people to live in and um, I'm absolutely committed and always have been about prisons are a place of rehabilitation and they should be all about rehabilitation um, I think Mandela uh, talked about um, you can only judge a nation you, and you, until you look inside its prisons. And I think uh, there are still difficulties in prisons at the moment um, that need to be addressed. And the government have obviously made a commitment to uh, new for old prisons to, to think about how we can uh, build a better infrastructure for, for people to be in custody. Um, and that we should, Nelson Mandela also said that we should judge a nation not by how we treat its highest citizens, but its lowest. And I absolutely believe in that. Um, the, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about now, I've had the opportunity, I guess, for the last two years to be involved in uh, the development through project stage to the opening of the prison and now the deputy governor of the prison. And over that time, um, we've spent a, a long, a, a lot of, time and effort thinking about how we'd wanted to deliver custodial services in a different way. Um, for those who don't know, so Berwyn is, it is a public sector prison, uh, now part of Her Majesty's Prisons and Probation Service, uh, which was recently formed um, a few months ago. The prison, we, we are very much about a commissioned service, so we have a commissioned services through, from the community rehabilitation companies, um, we have a commission learning and skills provision and I was involved in developing that provision and the specification that, um, that looked at the best outcomes for the men uh, in terms of their learning and uh, reskilling. And it did take account of all the recommendations from the Dame Sally Coates report um, that allowed people to think about their own personal social development, uh, to think about higher learning for men rather than just uh, up to level two, which was under the old OLAS contracts that exist in England. Um, and it, it's, it's also taken account of things that what I call building social capital. So building, thinking about what the men can do in their free time. And 
already, and we've only been open four months, we've got our, uh, our learning and skills pro provider, which is Novus Cambria, which is a consortium that won the, the commission service. Um, things like open, open mic night that the men are really enjoying and a choir and uh, we, we've got a brass band starting. So all those things that build that social capital in people. Um, we, we've also, uh, we'll have a, a commissioned industries provision and that industries provision is about reskilling the men in work that is, uh, that is, uh, there's a need for it in the, in, in the community. So we've looked at the labour market intelligence. So the provision uh, supports that trans, uh, trans, uh, transfer from custody into, into the community and reskilling people with, the, with those necessary skills. We, we've got a commission facility management and our, our health is provided by the local health board, which, was, uh, which is through Betsy Codwalder. So it's really important for us to work uh, in partnership with our commission services, but not only our commission services, we're working extremely hard with, um, with the third sector, uh, particularly within North Wales, to deliver the best outcomes for the men. It's, as, as was said, it's the largest prison in the UK, uh, with a, um, a maximum population of 2,106 men. And I think the importance of that, there's no facility at Berwyn for overcrowding. So we, we, we will not be in a prison that will overcrowd, uh, and I think that's vitally important. Um, we opened as a smoke-free environment. Um, I think uh, quite contentious, probably, uh, but I think in, I'm going to later in my, in my talk talk about the principles of normality, and I think you know, it's, it's normal that people can't smoke in pu public open spaces. Uh, you, you can smoke in, uh, in, in your own family room, but... It's about something about air quality and I think a duty of care to try and make sure people are, are kept safe and, and well in terms of their health. And, and we are a digital prison. We are the most advanced digital prison in, in the UK. Um, uh, each man has a computer in their room that um, allows them to take responsibility for, for their day-to-day day -day living, um, ordering their own food, booking their own visits, checking uh, their, their financial affairs, etc. So that it, it also allows them to talk to members of staff using that system to make applications. Um, and that does a number of things, I think. It, it builds resilience in people. Many of these people have, uh, have never um, seen a, an application that you might see on a mobile phone these days. So it builds resilience in terms of um, trans transfer into the community, being able to work with those systems. So it's a Category C prison, and um, we, we opened in February 2017, and we had a slow intake of men, and we, we're up now to, we've got a population of 430 men. Um, the design uh, incorporated everything we knew about what works best, so there was um, a, 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 quite a, a protracted um, project stage that looked at all the academic research evidence. Uh, we did um, best practice workshops to think about how we could deliver custodial services in a different way. Um, we looked at opportunities to optimise technology, which we're, I've already talked about, and we, we opened the prison in three phases. We're actually in phase two. So the three houses, uh, each of holding 702 men, and it's divided into communities of 88 men, which I'll explain a little bit later. We opened in uh, February uh, 27th of Feb, and we opened Alwyn this week, and we opened our, our last house block in uh, late su summer. So I thought it's useful just to sort of put a, a, a quick map up of the prison so you could sort of get a, a bird's eye view of what it looks like. So the three house units, uh, you can see workshops in the middle, which are, are not uh, open yet, uh, kitchen, our reception, healthcare facilities. I think to give a, a, an understanding of the scale of the prison, it's quite difficult. To, it's, you could fill it, fit the Millennium Stadium, those people who know the Millennium Stadium or the Principality Stadium, as it is now in, into our prison uh, seven times. So it gives an understanding of how big the prison is. So what was our vision? Um, our vision is to be a place of rehabilitation where men are encouraged and prepared to start for that fresh start in life. And I, I think you can, it, it's, it's about giving people chances. Um, people make mistakes in prison and people have, uh, and, and we have to sort of be uh, adaptable and work with the men 
our staff are, um, are very much on board with that, that ethos of giving uh, ambition and hope. Um, the staff, uh, their use of uh, legitimate authority, and we do this through um, confidence around commitment to fairness, transparency, and courtesy. Um, we, we recruited our staff based on, not on their competencies alone, but we recruited all our staff based on competency and their values. And I, I think that, that was really important for us as a, as a public sector uh, organisation. That had never been done before, certainly for, within the prison service. So we made that early decision that we should recruit people based on not only their competence to do the work that we wanted them to do, but also their, their values. Um, Upholding principles of procedural justice, I think, is, is really important in that the, the four elements of procedural justice is give it, allow, giving people a voice, and it's really important within prisons that the men do have a voice, um, and that you build trust and respect through allowing those men to have a voice and you maintain neutrality. And th th those, those core uh, elements of procedural justice within a, a prison environment are really important. That everyone is given that uh, given that that voice and an opportunity to be heard. We are such a large prison, um, and um, I'll talk later about how one of our uh, strategic priorities is about how, how do we keep big small. But it's it's really important within such a large prison that everyone is seen as an individual and everybody has a voice. Um, and, and things such as um, councils and uh, mentors are, are all part of that strategy to give people a voice. Um, changing behaviour by reward and not punishment. Um, a big stick doesn't change behaviour and it's important that um, we, we look at how do we reward behaviour. So we look at the positives rather than look and concentrate on the negatives. And the, the, the ethos has been we should, we should do everything based on the best behaviour, not try and work out how we, our processes and procedures are going to be based on the possible worst behaviour. So it's about changing behaviour through that reward and, uh, and, and not punishment. That reward can be as simple as, well, oh, well done. It, it's not a financial reward. It doesn't have to be a certification. And it's staff having that uh, ethos. Recognising people as individuals, as I said. Um, as part of our staff training, uh, for we, we've recruited a, a lot of staff as part of the project. And 70% of our staff at Berwyn are brand new into the prison service. And... Um, five-minute interventions is, was very much part of that training package. And I guess the, the easiest way to explain five-minute interventions, we could do a whole talk on five-minute interventions, is that conversations that make a difference. Um, the conversations that help men take responsibility for their own actions, Socratic questioning, the, a whole host of skills that we've given our staff to try and have those conversations that make a difference. So, our values. Um, Value each other and celebrate achievements. I think it, it, it goes back to what I, what I said about recognising when people do things well. Um, and there's, there's a great thing around um, the power of yet. So you haven't failed, you haven't passed, but you're, you're not quite made it yet. And we try and instill our staff about using that power of yet when they, when they talk about that. And, and, and not only for, for our staff, we, we've made sure that we've celebrated success in terms of our staff going through training uh, and having a graduation events, but we're also um, events that celebrate the successes of the men. Uh, and we, we are um, looking at how we can involve local schools so that we can get the children for the, for the local men come into the school and we have a celebration of success event that has the men uh, being rewarded or recognised for the work they've done. Uh, but their children also being recognised in the same event, and I think that's quite powerful. Um, acting with integrity and always speaking the truth. Um, I think th th that's twofold. It's really important that within a, within a new prison where you're trying to embed new processes that we allow um, staff to, to, to be able to uh, speak openly and honestly and with integrity without the feeling that there's a, a, a really... Um, a, serious consequence to that so very much about a, uh, a learning culture and um, trying to instill that in people you, you can you can uh, you can create continuous improvement and a, and a growth mindset if people always speak the truth and, and develop that looking to the future with uh, ambition and hope it's um, 
for, particularly for our men, um, I think if you've got people who are, who, are, who are looking to the future and they are ambitious of what they can achieve in the future, they're less likely to injure themselves, less likely to want to kill themselves in prison. So it's, it's about that encouragement and our staff through the five minute interventions that we've, that we've delivered to them as, uh, as part of our training package, it's about having those kind of conversations and helping the men to think past tomorrow or the day after and think about what future is, is there for them. Upholding f fairness and justice in all that we do um, within a prison environment, vitally important. Um, on, on any given day, you, you, you've got a ratio of uh, one member of staff to approximately 30 men. Prisons run on the goodwill of the men in, in those prisons. Um, uh, any prison could get pretty much overpowered uh, at any given time. And I think um, being able to show that you are fair and just in all that you do is vitally important for a, for a healthy prison. Um, embracing Welsh language and culture, um, that, that, that is vitally important. We are the largest prison in Wales and we are working extremely hard to ensure that we engage Welsh language and culture. We, um, we've, part of our ed education provision, we've been working with those. We have Welsh language lessons for staff and the men. Uh, we've got men who are Welsh, first, Welsh, uh, first language Welsh um, trying to teach our staff. Uh, we've got 38 members of our staff who are first language Welsh at the moment, 13 men who are Welsh language, first language Welsh at the moment, and we are expanding that. We've got Welsh lessons being taught for our staff and our men, and uh, our staff have the ability to enrol on a uh, Welsh language and culture course at Glyndor University. So it's something that we, 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 we really take account of. And stick at it is about resilience and resilience in our men. We will have, uh, it and our staff, we will have uh, uh, some rocky roads along the way, with, without doubt. And it's the ability to be able to stick at it and, and, and work through the, the hurdles. So the Berwyn Way. The Berwyn Way, we have three main strategic priorities. The, the first is a rehabilitative culture. The second is um, uh, how, how we keep big feelings small and the principles of normality. And I'm going to talk about those in a bit more depth if I can. So the, the rehabilitative triangle is, is that within, within a, uh, an, our environment, safety, decency and, and being just in everything that we do is the foundation of everything we do. If people don't feel safe in prison, they're less likely to engage in the opportunities that are available for them. If people don't think that we're being legitimate and procedurally just in all that we do, we're more likely to have violence in prisons and, and staff assaults and, and, and um, violence between the men. Um, that foundation opens up everything in terms of the rehabilitative uh, culture. Culture is a difficult thing. You, you, you're never really there, are you? It's, a, it's, it's, it's always a cloud in the sky, a, a, a culture. But there are some foundations uh, that create that culture. So um, having decent conditions is, is part of that culture, is part of that. The every contact matters, having mutual respect between the staff and the men, and having opportunities for men to re-educate themselves and, and uh, work that is in line with the labour market intelligence so that we can give them great opportunities when, they, when they're released. It's also about supporting men that have um, um, not only drug and alcohol um, issues, but other things such as mental health issues and having the right services in place to do that. Um, the, uh, and we, we work very hard with our, with our local health authority, which is our, our health provider, to make sure that we do that. Attitudes and behaviour, we have a, we have a, a large um, uh, interventions and psychology department that, that deliver offending behaviour programmes to the men. And uh, we have a, a, a team working on working with the uh, third sector organisations and with our CRC and probation service colleagues to ensure we get that transition into into um, into the community right. So principles of normality. I I think in a nutshell, if there's if there's things that are happening in the community that you never see happen in a prison then we need to start doing more of that. And is there things that you only ever see happen in a prison that you never see happening in a community? We need to start thinking how we can stop doing those things. So in every way possible, we, we want to make our environment feel as close to society as, as, we, 
as we can. And that is in line, I think, with N Nelson Mandela's Rule 5, which says that you know, prisons should be as close to the community as possible, so the transition from prison into a community is as seamless as possible. Um, and you know, things such as having open mic night, having a choir, having a brass band, naming our, our roads by street names, and having a cenotaph, and having a bank and a shop, these are all things that we're challenging ourselves to have. Having, having free-range chickens in the grounds, having trees, tree-lined streets, which you wouldn't normally have in prison, so we're challenging ourselves about trying to make prison as, as close as we can to, to that. To replicate as far as possible, um, and as safe as we can, that outside world perspective. And, and we, we've started to do focus groups. Now that we've got 400 plus men, we've started to do focus groups with men where we, we're walking around the ground and we're saying to them, how could we make this feel more like uh, a community? So we're having those conversations now that we've got the men. To be mindful that labeling individuals um, known for their behaviors, that, for us, it, it starts in language. Um, we, we encourage our staff to, to think about the language that they use. Why would we call somebody an offender or a prisoner? So we're labelling by the worst moment of, of their life. Um, we're, we're, late, we're calling them something we don't want them to be in the future. So we, we challenged ourselves to think about the language that we use. Call them rooms. It's their room. It's the living space rather than the cell. It, it's, we, we use their first names. We, we treat people uh, with respect. And we start thinking, and that's, the, I think, the foundations of building that principles of normality. We, we were very conscious that such a large prison, and the easiest way to look at Berwyn is three prisons within a prison. So we've got Alwyn, we've got Bala, we've got Kerryog, and uh, each, of, each of those houses holds 702 men. And uh, of those three houses, on each house, you've got a lower house, and you've got an upper house, and you've got eight, so you've got eight communities of 88 men on each, on each house. So 24 communities in all. We, we've already put in, in place some specific communities. Uh, we've got a veterans and first time in custodies communities. We've got a family interventions community. We've got a um, supported living community for men that have, have, have um, some learning difficulties and, and mental health issues. And um, we, we're expanding to have a, a lifers community and a parole community. So I think the importance of that, the ethos around that is about treating in, in people as giving people a, a sense of uh, belonging um, creating that community environment and, and we've tried to break it down into those communities of 88 with a continuity of staffing so that the relationships build between the staff and the men and they, they and we, 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 we've got, uh, we're in the, in the realms of um, electing a, a, a council for the men so each, each, each community has its own council and they make decisions based on, on uh, in, in consultation with the senior team. Um, we, we've also, um, in, in terms of the communities, we, we senior team uh, members take uh, ownership of each of the protected characteristic areas, and their responsibility is about developing those protected characteristic areas across the prison, and we, we, we're in the rounds of creating a, a timetable of um, events that happen throughout the year that take into consideration individual needs. Um, I thought it would be uh, to just show you that is a community of 88 men. So we have 24 of those communities in the prison. That's the, the Sean Stocker unit. Um, um, be worth Googling Sean Stocker. Sean Stocker is an army veteran that lost both his legs uh, and his eyesight in a, in a bomb blast in Afghanistan. And he's, uh, he's uh, kindly uh, agreed that we can call our veterans and first time in custody community after him. Um, so that community has men on there who are first time in custody and um, they are uh, 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 veterans. Um, and we've created those communities across the prison so that we can uh, start to think about people as individuals. The, the college, that's College, Cam uh, college Cambria, um, the, just gives you, a, a, I guess, a, we've tried to make our college look as, as close to a, a learning environment as you'd see in the community. I think that's really important access to the college during the evening times as well as in the day, good access to library, and with our IT systems being able to put books uh, on, on, on the computer system so they can electronically access books uh, so to enable that to happen. I think that's important in terms of culture and language as well. Uh, inside the library, and I just wanted to put that up, that, that's somebody's living space, so that's two men sharing a room. We've also got single rooms. Um, 
the, the, the rooms are, uh, they've got their own shower, they've got their own integral sanitation, obviously, the computer, the TV, um, and we, we try people to encourage people to take responsibility and, and take ownership of their living space. And that, that is not an unusual, you know, well, well kept rooms um, that people take pride in. And um, I think the challenge for us as we're going forward is to maintain that decent environment. But I, th I think all things said and done, um, you know, we've got great facilities at Berwyn. We, we certainly have. Um, but we've recently had um, the first results of what we call a measure in the quality of prison life, which are surveys conducted by the men. And the, in terms of the living conditions, you would expect those scores to be really high. But it, it's great to see that the scores for things such as respect and decency and humanity, though, those, uh, those um, dimensions are absolutely coming out really high. So we've got the foundations and the building blocks, I think, to, to ensure that we have a prison that delivers custodial services in a decent way, in a just way, and, but also in a humane way. Thank you very much.